Welcome back to Old History. Today's video is going to be over the historic Morristown College. It's going to be a revision of the video that I made so many years ago. So, that being said, please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. But first, are you sick of your beard feeling like sandpaper? Can you not find the right beard oil? Well, I'll go visit my good friend Jason over at the Beard Guy and Friends for all your beardly needs. Morristown College was a historic African-American higher education institution located in Morristown, Tennessee. It was founded in 1881 by the National Freedmen's Aid Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church and closed in 1994 after a brief affiliation with the Knoxville College. The future site of the college became part of the 1864 Battle of Morristown, which was then part of a federal occupation camp during the last months of the Civil War and the subsequent Reconstruction. The site was also the location of an old slave market where Andrew Fulton, who is believed to be among the last few slaves sold there, became one of the college's first professors. In 1869, Amira H. Stearns came to Tennessee from New Jersey to open a grammar school for black children. And by 1881, the National Freedmen's Aid Society expanded her school by opening Morristown Seminary and Normal College. They would go on to receive the full support of the Methodist Episcopal Church, and the purpose of this new school would be to train ministers and teachers for the black population of the region. The church would appoint Judson S. Hill, who was a 27-year-old pastor and missionary from Trenton, New Jersey, to be the first president. And under Hill's leadership, the college would grow to be over 300 students by the turn of the century. Now, to raise money needed for classroom buildings and dormitories, Hill secured funds from northern philanthropists such as Andrew Carnegie, the McCormicks of Chicago, and the Kelloggs of Battle Creek, Michigan. In addition, Hill solicited contributions from local merchants. Through his successes in fundraising, Hill was able to launch a major expansion and building program for the college that included the construction of dormitories, classrooms, administrative offices, and a dining facility. The school would also acquire a 300-acre dairy farm a little bit later on. Hill's improvements at Morristown College occurred within the larger context of Jim Crow South. Most white people saw little need for African-American education, especially higher education. And many northern and southern leaders, and even some black educators such as Booker T. Washington, had tried to compromise with the white society by channeling African-Americans into industrial and vocational education. Following this trend, Hill introduced industrial training and by 1901, the college was renamed Morristown Normal and Industrial College. And some of the industrial courses offered for male students included woodworking, uh, brick making and masonry, carpentry, iron molding, shoe making, room manufacturing, and agricultural sciences. And for the females, domestic science classes included sewing, cooking, and serving techniques. The products created in these classes such as brooms, were sold all across the United States, and the profits were given right back to the college. For the remainder of Hill's presidency, industrial education would be the primary focus of the college, decreasing the earlier emphasis on teacher and clergy training. Hill would pass away in 1931, and coupled with the onset of the Great Depression, the college would go through some pretty dramatic changes. Edward Paulson would become the president for three years and would change the direction of the school from industrial to traditional liberal arts. Now, he would be unable to turn around the school financially and would resign. J.W. Haywood would be the first black president and succeeded Paulston and managed the campus for seven years. In 1944, Miller W. Boyd became the first alumnus to become president. Through his successful fundraising techniques and incredible leadership, enrollment rose to 435 students. After the civil rights movement of the 1960s, African Americans were able to attend previously all-white state-supported colleges and universities, and as a result, Morristown College found itself increasingly difficult to compete with larger public institutions that could offer cheaper tuition and receive state and federal funds. And over the next 20 years, the college continued to struggle financially, and in 1989, Knoxville College acquired Morristown and began operating it as a junior college. But Knoxville College also had its challenges and closed the Morristown campus in the mid-1990s. The college would be among 
the first schools in the area dedicated to the higher education of black Americans. Students came from Florida, North Carolina, New York, and New Jersey, and really just all around the country. They could claim more than 20 majors, including business administration, special ed, physical ed, theology, psychology, and many, many more. At its peak, the campus had 12 buildings and 365 acres. What started with missionaries then became a grammar school, and then it became a college. It served as an African-American high school for Morristown and the surrounding area during segregation. Though its name changed from Morristown Seminary to Morristown Normal and Industrial, then to Morristown College, it remained an important educational and cultural institution. After its closure in the 1990s, the college became subject to all sorts of cruel torture. Vandals would break into the buildings and demolish the interiors of all the buildings. Ghost hunters would trespass and homeless people would stay there. Coupled with the antagonizing effect that time has on sitting buildings, it would be deemed as a complete loss by the 2010s when an arsonist set fire to the main campus building. And soon after, by 2015, the city of Morristown acquired the property and set a date for the historic grounds to be demolished. While none of the original buildings stand today, the legacy of the college continues to go on as the grounds have been made into a heritage park that everyone can enjoy without fear of prosecution.